10150 Lesson 7. In this video, we will be solving polynomial equations which are quadratic in form. And so just to recall, so far in this course and in a college algebra course, you have solved quadratic equations. We have solved them in many different ways. Um, so if we have a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, one of the ways is either to factor them, complete the square, or use the quadratic formula to solve them. So if we run into any quadratic equation, we know how to solve them right away. And in pre-calculus, you're going to be solving um, in general, polynomial equations that are of degree 3, degree 4, and you'll learn lots of methods to do that. But for the purposes of this course, we're going to learn how to solve polynomials, which are quadratic in disguise. So polynomials, so polynomial equations, quadratic in form, is a term used for polynomials that look like this. So I'm going to use the variable y now. So polynomials that look like a y to the 2n, b times y to the n plus c equals 0. And again, we're going to be using, essentially, we're going to do substitution we're going to kind of squint and pretend that this is a quadratic equation, and we're going to substitute x for y, y to the n, and then we're going to look like, um, and then we're going to solve it like a quadratic equation, and then go back to our substitution and continue solving there. Now, y doesn't have to be a single variable, as we'll see in our examples y can be a polynomial in and of itself and that is going to be our substitution so let's look let's look at some examples so example one we're asked to solve the following y to the fourth minus nine y squared plus twenty equals zero at first, this may seem like a bit intimidating because there's an exponent 4 in this equation, but really, there are a lot of things missing from it. There's no y cubed term and there's no y term. So really, this is a polynomial equation that's quadratic in form. We're going to do a substitution. We're going to say, well, let's say x is y squared, and let's rewrite this equation. Then this becomes x squared minus 9x plus 20 equals x. Well, this is a quadratic equation. We know how to solve quadratic equations. We can either use the quadratic formula, but this one is fairly friendly towards factoring. We can factor this into x minus 5 times x minus 4 and well we've just broken up our equation into two linear equations and so this means that we have an equation x minus 5 equals 0 which gives us the solution x equals 5 and we also have an equation x minus 4 equals 0 gives us the solution x equals 4. We may be tempted to stop here, but we need to remember that we originally were asked to solve an equation with y's, not x's. x is something that we made up along the way. So now, this is where we use our substitution. Wait a minute, x equals 5, but I need to solve for w's. So now, I have another equation, I have the equation y squared equals 5. This is what I must solve. Well, y squared equals 5 is also a quadratic equation. It's a simpler one. This gives me two solutions. y equals radical 5 and y equals negative radical 5. C 
similarly with x equals 4. x equals 4 is really y squared equals 4, and that gives me two more solutions, y equals 2 and y equals negative 2. So our final solution is the following set. It's the set of minus 2 plus 2 minus radical 5 and radical 5. We can also write them down as plus minus 2 and plus minus radical 5. But nevertheless, this is our final solution set. There are four solutions to this degree 4 polynomial equation. So whenever you do a substitution, it is very helpful in making harder equations look like quadratic equations. But once you solve those easier equations, you always must plug back in what you substituted and get the solutions and the variables that you were asked for. Let's look at another problem. Example 2, we're asked to solve y to the fourth minus 9 equals 0. We can use substitution here, certainly, but we can also we can also recognize that this is a difference of squares. So recall a difference of squares. That if we have a squared minus b squared, that factors into a plus b times a minus b. In this instance, this example, we have a, that's y squared, and we have b, that is 3. So, what we can do is we can take y to the fourth minus 9 equals 0, and we can rewrite this as y squared plus 3 times y squared minus 3 equals 0. Now, usually when you're solving polynomial equations, it's usually specified whether they're looking, whether we're looking for, whether you're being asked for only real solutions or real and complex solutions, pay attention to that. We're going to find all solutions here. So now, you broke, broke this up into two pieces. So one of them is the equation y squared plus 3 equals 0. Well, how do we solve that? That's just y squared equals negative 3. Using the square root property, this gives us the solutions plus or minus radical negative 3, which is plus or minus i times radical 3. The second piece, y squared minus 3 equals 0, gives us the equation y squared equals 3. And by the square root property, this is plus or minus radical 3. So the final solution set is plus minus radical 3 and plus minus i times radical 3. You're asked to write down each solution separated by a comma on the homework system. You write down all four of them separated by commas. And so the final solution for this problem is that y equals 2 plus or minus radical 3 or plus or minus i times radical. Let's do another example. This one is a little bit different. So we are asked to solve the following. x plus 1 squared plus 6x plus 1 plus 9 equals 0. Now, this equation one way to do it is to certainly FOIL out x plus 1 squared and then expand, distribute the 6 to the parentheses, expand, combine all the like terms, and get another quadratic equation and solve that. That will take us a lot of time. What we can also recognize is that we can kind of do a substitution here. 
we can say, well, why don't we rename things a bit? Because this looks like something squared plus a constant times that same something plus a constant. So why don't we do this substitution where y equals x plus 1? What will that give us? Well, that makes the equation y squared plus 6y plus 9 equals 0. This is a regular quadratic equation, and we can solve it by factoring. This is a perfect square trinomial. This is y plus 3 squared equals 0. This gives us the solution y plus 3 equals 0, or y equals negative 3. Again, it's tempting to stop here and say that's our solution, but our original equation was in x's. So we have to make the substitution. y equals x plus 1. So that means we have negative 3 equals x plus 1. And x actually equals negative 4. And so that is the final solution to this problem. If we want to write it in bracket form, it's going to look like this. The only solution is negative 4. Again, if you do a substitution, that is a completely valid way to solve this problem, but you have to write your answer in the original variable. So this often requires us to find the solution of the easier equation and then convert back into the original variables. Let's look at a more extreme example where we have the following equation. We have 3x squared minus 4x squared equals 3 times 3x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now again, we may be tempted to foil everything out and combine like terms. If we do, we're going to get a degree 4 polynomial because three, the highest degree here is 3x squared squared. That's going to be 9x to the fourth. We're going to get a lot of other terms here, and it's going to be a very complicated equation. Or we can recognize that there's some pattern here. And there's a pattern here that there is something squared equals 3 times that same something plus a number. So we can do a substitution of y equals 3x squared minus 4x. And it's always helpful to write down the substitution and switch your variables. So now this complicated looking equation becomes y squared equals 3y plus 4. Now this is a quadratic equation, and just like any other quadratic equation, we have to bring all terms over on one side in order to solve it. So we have y squared minus 3y minus 4 equals 0. We can easily factor this into y minus 4 and y plus 1 equals 0. Now we're going to have two linear equations. So we have y minus 4 equals 0, which gives us the solution y equals 4. And we also have y plus 1 equals 0, giving us the solution y equals negative 1. However, we're not done here because our original problem was in x's. So we have now two equations, a and b, to solve. So let's look at the first one. Let's look at equation a, which corresponds to y equals 4. Well, if y equals 4, this is 4 equals 3x squared minus 4x. Now, we bring everything over to one side, and we have 0. 
and we have 0 equals 3x squared minus 4x minus 4. We can factor this, or use a quadratic formula, whatever we prefer, into 3x minus 1 and x minus into, we can factor this into 3x plus 2 and x minus 2. We double check that 3x minus 2 is negative 6x, and 2 times x is 2x, 2x minus 6x gives us minus 4x, and the last term, 2 times negative 2 is indeed 4, and so this gives us two solutions, 3x plus 2 equals 0, which gives us 3x equals negative 2, x equals negative 2 thirds, and the second one, y minus 2 equals 0, gives us x equals 2. So, so far, we have two solutions from equation A. Now we do equation B. That equation is, corresponds to y equals negative 1. So y equals negative 1 is negative 1 equals 3x squared minus 4x, which is 0 equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 1, which is factored 3x minus 1 times x minus 1. always double check our factorization and then we solve each linear piece 3x minus 1 equals 0 means 3x equals 1 or x equals 1 third and x minus 1 equals 0 means x equals 1 so now we have two more solutions that we got from the second equation and so finally we're going to list all our solutions, negative two-thirds, one-third, one, and two. And this is the final solution to this problem. We have four values of x that will satisfy this equation. And so again, we did a substitution. It's important to record that substitution. That's very crucial for the second part. And once you reduce your complicated equation into a simple quadratic equation, you solve that. You remember you're only halfway there. And when we got y equals 4 and y equals negative 1, that led us to two more quadratic equations, which we were able to solve each by factor.